But you about to fight it You know I'm a lunatic Losing it I might be These lyrics I know you fear them They supreme like a hype beast I'm striking out rappers like I'm pitching to them with lightning I feast Fight Fiend Forecast We're back for the final pay-per-view of the year UFC 296 Two title fights And I'm a little bit late It's Thursday I'm recording it on a Wednesday Very busy schedule at work I'm surprised I'm even getting a video out there this week $5 a month for early access to my picks, to the locks, props, dog of the week, everything. $5 a month on Patreon. They're getting early access. And they're getting access to not only UFC bets, but NBA bets. We've been killing it each and every day. We got bets going right now, Wednesday night. And we're going to have bets going tomorrow night. So for $5 a month, you're going to get basketball bets as well. I'm also into the NHL, NFL, but... The NBA bets have been doing us good, and we've been making the money. So make sure to join Discord absolutely free. You can see all my bet wins in Discord, and I also post some free bets in Discord, and you can also see the lock of the week, dog of the week, and props of the week for the fight nights, exclusive and early. So get in Discord. You get early access to some stuff. You get some free picks, and you can see all my bet wins each and every night. So if you see me going off... Join Patreon, $5 a month. Come win some money with us. Like, I'm doing this for you guys. Everybody in Patreon, you know, they're very pleased. And they've been showing me the wins. And that's what it's about. It's about my customers getting money, getting paid. And that's what we're going to look to do here. So, you guys don't even have to pay me money. I'm doing this for absolutely free. I'm going to run through the picks quick. So, if you want to give me heat in the comments, probably going to delete the comment. We don't got time for that. We're trying to make some money together here it's us against the bookies and i want to try to help you guys out so you guys can help me out if i have a pick that's wrong you disagree with it let me know but you know let's be friendly with each other help each other out no need to start beef start making fun of each other you know us against the bookies let's go get it first fight of the night randy brown muslim sally Kof. i don't love the price of this fight you know sally Kof's getting counted out here three dollar underdog he is old, 39 years old, doesn't have a reach advantage, lacking 8 inches in this fight. Randy Brown is just going to pick him apart at range, I suspect, but the, it's not going to be easy to finish a guy like Salikoff. I don't think the finish is going to be live for Randy Brown. I think it should be a decision, 29-28, if not maybe a 30-27. This could look easy for Randy Brown. Obviously, money's been coming in here. A lot of people think he's going to get it done. I just don't think it's going to be that easy. Probably a 29-28 decision. Could be a split as well. Muslim Salikov is very good on the feet. So I'm kind of expecting Randy Brown to take this one to the ground. Get some control of time. And get the job done here. And next up, the big boys are going to work. Martin Boudet, Shamil Gaziev. Heavyweight clash on the early prelims here. One loss between these two fighters. And it's priced pretty close here. So you got to be pretty wise parlaying these two guys. It's probably not worth it. You know, it's heavyweights. Anything can happen. I'm going to go with the guy that's undefeated here. I see him as an underdog. Not quite sure why. He's fighting from Bahrain. And these guys at the KHK team, they're friggin' good. So I'm not going against them, that's for sure. Boudet, he's pretty slow. I feel like, you know, Gaziev's going to be just a step ahead. He's going to be able to calculate the shots of Boudet and find a finish, honestly. Gaziev has a lot of finishes on his record he's making easy work of these guys on the contender series he was tested but easy work round one submission i believe he's gonna find maybe a round one finish here knockout or submission either way and it's heavyweights like usually the fight ends in a finish sometimes it goes the distance you never know you could even just play the money line for gaziev in this spot it's 215 you're gonna double up and i think the underdog's the rightful side in this fight and next up we're not looking at the underdog in this fight. Andre Fali against Lucas Almeida. A guy that me and Loaf used to always take as an underdog. I know we had him against Pat Sabatini. A round two submission loss by arm triangle. Andre Fali, you know, he doesn't have that great of a submission ability. But he can get the fight to the ground. He can get the control. And he can out-wrestle Almeida in this spot. Now, he has three rounds to work. I think he's going to get it done. He's going to outwork this guy, Almeida. Like I said, he's been our underdog before. I've put lots of research into this guy. He's not getting this one done. He's 250. Don't go chasing this underdog. Take the favorite. 
this is a favorite that you could put in parlays. This is one you could go heavy on. Trust me, I don't want to steer you guys in the wrong direction here. I think Andre Fali should be the much better fighter. If you want to fade it, fade it. But uh, definitely should be the rightful favorite, no doubt about it. And one other thing, just trust your instinct. You don't always have to listen to what I'm saying. That's just what I'm thinking on this fight. You have a different feeling or you have a different read on this fight, you know, go with that. Always go with your instinct because most of the time your instinct's going to be right. Don't let other people's opinions or the opinion of the bookies change your opinion on how the fight's going to finish. Just stick with your gut instinct and you're going to be fine. So let's keep it going here. We got a Russian, Tagir Ulenbekov, and Cody Durden. And I thought long and hard about this one. So I'm going with the gut instinct again. Going to trust that tummy. I'm going with... I, I was going with the Russian. I'm not going to lie. And then I had to switch it to Cody Durden. But the problem is, if everybody's on this underdog, I'm not going on Cody Durden. Because many, many times, every capper takes an underdog. And that underdog does not perform. Cody Durden's been submitted before. And Ulan Bekov can find that submission. Like, he can... No doubt about it. I know Nathan Maness ain't a very impressive win by submission, but round one, pretty dominant. I think Cody Durden, if he takes it to the ground, he's just going to have to be aware of those submissions. And if he stays out of the submission and he doesn't get controlled, he's going to get his own control time. He's going to get the takedowns. And I think he's going to have the better cardio here as well. It should be a Cody Durden play. Another underdog here on the early prelims. We're going to be making some money here, plus money all over the board so if you disagree on this one take the russian but i'm not feeling it i was originally after taking a deep dive into it you know i gotta go with the underdog here he has some impressive wins especially his last fight jake hadley i'm pretty sure i was against him there but i did bet him by a decision cody durden by a decision i think i'll be betting it again and it's going to be my pick so let me know in the comments what you think about this fight i'm assuming Majority of people are going to be on Cody Durden. My buddy Tim at Knuckleheads is going to be on Cody Durden. But as for the other cappers that I listen to, I don't know. I've been so busy. I haven't listened to anyone yet. Like I said, it's Wednesday night. I haven't listened to anybody. I've only been talking back and forth with my buddy Tim from Knuckleheads. And I know he's going with Cody Durden. He loves going with the wrestlers. And when he's uh, taking a wrestler and I'm taking a wrestler and we're both fairly confident in the pick, turns out pretty good. But like I said, I'm a little bit worried on this one. Not going to be betting heavy on it, but definitely going to take a stab at this underdog again. And next up, we got another underdog here. So Alonzo Manyfield's going to be throwing hands with Dustin Jacoby. Light heavyweight bout. I got to go with the dog. $3? Am I seeing something wrong here? 14-3-1 Alonzo Manyfield. And 19-7-1, Dustin Jacoby. Jacoby did knock out Kennedy Nezechiku, but he's getting these weird wins here and there, and it's around 1 KO. He lost that split decision to Khalil Roundtree, and Alonzo Menefield's built the same. He's a smart fighter, too. Like People are doubting this guy for sure at this price. I'm going to take the shot. Alonzo Menefield, he could even be a dog of the week. I'm going to have my dog lock props posted tomorrow after work. So get on Discord absolutely free. You're going to get access to that. I'm also going to have another video Friday. So back-to-back -back videos this week before we get going with the rest of the prelims. Smash the like button. Suplex the subscribe button if you're new. I appreciate everybody stopping by here, listening to the forecast this week. Everybody wants to make some money. Like I said before at the start of the video, it's us versus the bookies. No time for BS. If you're fade me, you're fade me. That's all right. Hopefully, I'm not going to be betting heavy. Hopefully, you guys win your money. Hopefully, I win mine. Like I said, we all have the same goal in mind. Let's keep it going. Tell me what you think in the comments as well. If you disagree with the pick, let me know. And next up, we got the first prelim fight of the night, Casey O'Neill and Ariana Lipsky. This one probably should have been on the early prelims, but we're going to break it down, and we're going to make some money here. Casey O'Neill, she's coming off her first loss. She's going to be hungry. And she definitely learned something after that loss to Jennifer Maya. Maya's a very good veteran to the game. Not a bad loss at all. And you look at Ariana Lipsky, I think she's overperforming a little bit. Getting a little bit lucky in this fight. Tables are going to turn. I think she's going to get knocked out, finished. O'Neal has a couple finishes in the UFC. She could definitely finish a girl like Lipsky who's going to come in there swinging hands low. Just not the highest IQ in my opinion. 
Like I said, she's been overperforming. And if she does not come out as good as she looked in her last couple fights, she's going to get picked apart against this prospect, Casey O'Neill. I believe in her a lot. She's going to be on parlays. Maybe I'm a little bit too confident in her. But at 153, I see a lot of value there. And I'm definitely going to be looking to have a single bet with her for the knockout. Just looking at the record for Lipsky. She's been losing by KO a couple times. I think it's four times now. And four decision losses. So it's going one or two ways. She's getting knocked out. If not, she's just going to get ragdolled into the decision. So let's go Casey O'Neill. Bring us home the money. And next up on the prelims, we got Cody Garbrandt and Brian Kelleher. And shout out to the new matchmaker on this fight. I'm pretty excited for this one. Cody Garbrandt finally going to get a couple wins in a row here. Back-to-back -back wins. Coming off a win to Trevin Jones. Garbrandt was struggling in his UFC career after he lost the belt. But he's, he's getting it back together, okay? He's picking the pieces back up. And they're giving them a winnable fight, Brian Kelleher. I don't know how you can say this is not a winnable fight for Garbrandt. Garbrandt has to be the play. This is another 150 price tag that I'm going to be all over. I love these 150 price tags on this card. I think the matchmakers are doing their job correctly. They're giving fighters that they want to win winnable fights. The matchmakers got a job to do and us as betters have to realize, you know, what they're doing here. They're giving Garbrandt another win. There's not much to talk about. You can go and look at their previous fights. This has to be a Garbrandt play for me. I'm probably going to be looking at the decision as well. He has pillow fists. He doesn't really have much of a submission ability. And Kelleher's tough enough to last 15 minutes with this guy for sure. But, you know, Garbrandt's going to have a lot of volume, a lot of cardio, maybe some takedowns, control time. Kelleher ain't going to do enough within 15 minutes to win this fight. Unfortunately, he's 37. I do like him as a fighter, but, you know, he's he's coming to the end of his career. Can't go with him here. I'm already taking enough underdogs on this card. There's no way in hell I'm taking Kelleher. <laughs> and next up, another 150 favorite. Tag her on Irene Aldana against Carol Rosa. Like I said at the start of the show, we all have the same game plan. It's us versus the bookies. So let's go to work here. This should be a clear favorite. Let's not overthink any of these fights. Trust our instinct, you know. Make sure our reads are correct. Keep calm, you know. There's no reason to overthink anything, s stress out about anything at all, okay. Just take a deep breath. We got this. We're going to make our money. Let's go back to work here. We got Irene Aldana coming off a loss to Amanda Nunes where she went 25 hard minutes. Lost a unanimous decision. She is 35, but... She's still in her prime. She's going to get this one done. Carol Rosa just won a split decision to Yana Santos. Yana Santos, in my opinion, isn't near the level of Irene Aldana. And I can't wait for her to prove it. She has a lot of finishes on her record as well. So we could see a flashy finish. And kind of like the other women's fight. This is a girl coming off a loss. She probably doesn't like to lose. You got to think about if it's you coming off a loss. Like You're obviously going to fight pretty hard your next fight. Nobody likes losing, eh? So... She's going to fight hard. I expect her maybe to find a finish. I could be looking to play that as well. And next up, the prelim headliner. This is a banger fight. Josh Emmett getting Bryce Mitchell on short notice. Giga 2.0 was supposed to be fighting Josh Emmett, but he withdrew. Undisclosed reasons. Now we got Bryce Mitchell as a 144 favorite. That worried me for a bit, but this is another spot where you just got to kind of sit back and... Trust your instinct. Hope that your reads are going to be correct. And, you know, just not overthink anything. I'm going with Bryce Mitchell until the wheels fall off. Like I said before, man. He's going to be able to get takedowns whenever he wants. He always has that submission ability in his back pocket. He's relentless. And on the feed, he has some power. He's shown improvements. But he's not going to have the power of Josh Emmett by any means. I don't think his striking is going to be at that level. But... At the end of the day, he's going to have good cardio. He's going to have a good game plan. And his Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, is going to take care of him and get him the win. i got to go with Bryce Mitchell in this spot. Josh Emmett, he's having a tough time cutting weight. And not only that, he's 38 years old. He's not the youngest guy in the game. Bryce Mitchell's just going to have a lot more in the tank. I know he's battling through some injuries and stuff like that, but the motivation is there. The mindset is there. 
Gotta be Bryce Mitchell all day long here, 144. Don't love the price, but I'm gonna take him. And if you have not yet, I would love for you guys to smash that like button, suplex the subscribe button, and comment below, it helps with the algorithm. And we're gonna start it off with Vicente Luque and Ian Gary. I hate this price. I don't even love the pick at this point. Like, if anybody's taking Vicente, credit to you. I hope you win it. Honestly, I hope you win at this point. Ian Gary, 13-0, 128 favorite. I know he's looking phenomenal, like a world beater, but one of these times he's going to lose, and I want to be on the other side, you know? I, I want to be on that underdog money when Ian Gary loses because when he loses, he's going to be the favorite, 100%. So I don't know if this is it or not. This is definitely a step up for him. I think Vicente is better than Neil Magny. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comments below, but I think this is a step up. Prices are always going to be wide, so, you know, if you're fading Ian Gary and he loses, you're getting paid. You're getting paid, and that pick alone could be the only pick you need to make on this entire card because 360 is great, great value for Vicente Luque, and I think it should be a hell of a lot closer so usually when I think that, it's just an automatic bet spot, but I'm going to have to dig a little bit deeper on this fight. We're going to talk about it more tomorrow on the next show, but the Pixie and Gary, obviously, by a decision. He's most likely not going to get a finish, but you never know. He can always find a KO out of his back pocket. I just don't think he's going to have the back pocket tricks in this fight. I think he's going to need uh, the back pocket of the judge. And next up, the blood sugars are going to be high with Tony Ferguson and Patty Pimblett in the lightweight division. Tony Ferguson has lost his last number of fights. I don't know if he's ever going to win. <laughs> like, I did take him a couple times. He looked good, and then he just fell off that cliff. Against Nate Diaz, like, he was looking phenomenal, and then he just walked into that submission, just gave up that fight. Against Michael Chandler, he looked phenomenal in the first round. Honestly did. He looked pretty damn good. And then he got caught with that kick. And then Bobby Green, like, he was looking so-so. And then he got submitted, like, submitted cold, which he doesn't tap. He never tapped. He went out cold. So you don't love that. He's not going to tap to Patty the Batty, but Patty could put him to sleep. That could happen. That's It's a fight. Anything can happen, right? So <sighs> you, just, you just don't want to see Tony Ferguson lose another fight. You know, he's fought the much better level of competition, no doubt about it. 20-3, and three, Patty Pimblett, though. You know, he's been having his way. His last fight with Jared Gordon, I don't like it. I know a lot of people don't like it as well, so here's the thing. I'm going to trust in my instinct here. I don't know if it's going to be a good instinct, but we're not going to look back. Tony Ferguson, he's been with David Goggins. I don't know if that's going to help him or not, but... Like I said, he's looked all right in some fights. <laughs> I just feel like this is one he's going to catch Patty, going to get him in a submission or something. He's going to get the finish, and he's finally going to get a win. Just when everyone's counting him out. Everyone. He's, he's going to get it done one way or another. I'm going Tony Ferguson. I don't know how many people are going to go with Tony Ferguson, but I have a feeling he's getting it done by finish. And next up, we got a fight with some real implications here. Shavkat Rachmanov and Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. And Wonderboy Thompson is going to give Shavkat some looks. I know it's a big price tag, 550. Some people might think this is going to be a walkthrough for Shavkat, walk in the park, home run. But, you know, I'm not quite sure. Every time we think that, it's not the case. I'm, I'm the biggest Shavkat fan. I think he's going to get the finish. I'm not going to lie. I think he's going to get the finish. I think he's going to get it in round one. But, you know, am I going to bet a lot of money on a round one finish or a finish or have him parlayed out the ass? Let's not do that, okay? Let's let's not do that. Biggest favorite on the card. How many times does that go wrong, all right? So we, we've we learned from our mistakes. We're not going to make the same mistake twice. We're not going to make the same mistake twice. Shavkat should win this fight. He should win this fight by a submission. Steven Wonderboy Thompson ain't going to be easy to beat. He's not going to be easy to take down or control or outstrike, anything like that. He's not an easy guy to dominate. Gilbert Burns wasn't able to submit him. I don't think he's ever been submitted, so it's not going to be an easy task. It's a tall task. It could even be a Shavkat decision. That's not out of this world. That's not impossible either. 
Shavkat is a finisher, but, you know, we just got to play this one safe. I'm just really excited to watch this fight. I'm not excited to bet it. I'm not going to have my money on it. I'm not going to parlay it. Shavkat's the play. <sighs> just be smart with your money. Be smart with your bets, parlay, stuff like that. Don't be wasting your hard-earned money on massive, massive favorites because it's not going to pay out. It's not even going to be worth that extra couple cents on your parlay, anything like that. You know, if anything, if you have a strong lean on Wonderboy Thompson, maybe, you know, you think he can upset Shavkat. This could be Shavkat's first ever loss. Maybe you have some inside information on Shavkat. Maybe he ain't feeling good. Let us know. But Shavkat should slaughter him. Last card, I thought it was a sleeper card. It was really weak. And it was weak. I fell asleep during the card. But, you know, I only had three picks wrong. I stay consistent. I'm not trying to steer you guys in the wrong direction. Anything like that, you know. We're all trying to make this money. Us against the bookies. Two fights left. Let's fucking get it. Alexander Pontoja, Brandon Royvel. How many times do I need to say it on this card? I'm giving you lots of betting strategy here. We don't need to overthink it. Okay, we're just going to sit back, relax, and just think about this one here. Pantoja finally got the belt. First title defense. Beat Brandon Moreno, who, in my opinion, is a better fighter than Brandon Roy Vell. Did beat him by a split decision, but if you look at that fight, you know, on the feet, on the ground, Pantoja was outclassing Moreno, in my opinion. It could have been a unanimous decision. That was a good performance from Pantoja. Pantoja already had Moreno's number. Looking back at Roy Vell, man... He has a loss. His last loss was to Pintoja, I'm pretty sure, by a submission in the second round. I know Roy Vell's looking good. He's getting these finishes, but the dude's hungry. He's very, very hungry, and he's going to be hungry in this fight, no doubt about it. But when you're hungry, and you're fighting like that, and you got nothing to lose, you get caught. And in this fight, I believe Brandon Roy Vell will get caught. Pantoja will defend his belt and find a finish here. Should be another easy favorite to parlay up. Very confident in Pantoja this week. I also think he's going to find a finish, if you can't tell. And next up, we got the other title fight, Leon, Rocky Edwards, and Colby Covington. This is it. This is what everybody has been waiting for. This is a good-ass fight. Leon's been trying to duck it. Colby's been wanting it. I've been wanting it, and we finally get it. Final fight of the year. I'm rocking with my guy, Colby Covington, USA baby, ride or die. 220 money's been coming in on this i think i'm gonna keep it rolling here colby covington he's gonna have the cardio advantage he has lost his last two title shots but this is the one i think he's gonna get he's been win loss win loss he's due for the loss colby is but i think it all ends here he's gonna get the dub against leon edwards who hasn't had the most impressive wins nate diaz not the best win and he's honestly been treated fairly good when it comes to the matchmaking looking at it like Hasn't really had the biggest wins. I know he beat Usman his last two fights, but majority decision, looking back at that, Usman like took him down and controlled him. I thought Usman was winning that fight. I did have money on Usman, but just looking at the stats after the fact, I still think that maybe should have been Usman, but can't take anything away from that round five head kick KO. That was a lucky shot. There's no doubt about that. You know, you heard the coaches yelling at Leon, trying to pump him up, and then he found that kick. It was a lucky shot. I don't think he's going to find the same shot against Colby, but he's definitely going to be keeping the same range. He's going to be not going in too close. He's going to be trying to stay at distance and just pick his shots, and I don't think it's going to work. I think Colby's going to pressure him and grind him out, take him down, control him. I think he's just going to have way more pressure and cardio than... Usman had to offer he's not gonna have the power and he's not gonna be as dangerous but the fact that he's gonna have a lot of cardio and a lot of gas is gonna make him dangerous and I think it's gonna get his hand raised in this fight so I gotta go with USA here I gotta go Kobe Covington gotta go with another dog that's a number of underdogs on this card and like I've been saying throughout the video we got to trust in ourselves we got to trust in our research trust that instinct make sure we're making the right reads here staying calm staying collective and just mentally we're gonna make it happen here not gonna stress out we're not gonna worry about anything right we're not gonna overlook anybody we're not gonna overthink anything you know all we're gonna do is just go make our money and take advantage of these bookies you know what time it is it's our time let's go get it 
one time for the one time. It's our time. Let's go get it. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Let's cook up. This is not over.